Good morning, Congo fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your Evolve and host, Shorty. First off, apologies for no new comic book uh, day video today. Really thin pickings. Uh, no merch whatsoever, no action figures. A couple of graphic novels, a couple of manga books, and a few comic books. Really would have been a one minute long video. Didn't seem worth it at the end. But one of the new releases is this one. Dead Romans. Um, this falls into the category very similar to uh, No One from the other week, where it's like nobody really asked for it that much until the last minute somebody had it onto a pull list. And I've got to be honest, as well as being a comic book owner and a big heavy metal fan and really into rugby league uh, and a whole bunch of other things that I have as interest, one of them is history. I have I've my degrees in uh, history and heritage. Uh, I did a little bit of research on Roman stuff, mainly for my own entertainment rather than academically. But when I see something about Romans, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll take a look at it. So I ordered a couple of spares thinking, yeah, let's give it a look. And... I did quite. I did find myself enjoying it, but there's a couple of things at the front I'm going to top load to be like, yeah, this is not the perfect comic book review I wanted it to be, uh, and that's because the basic story setup is a little bit just okay. I mean, nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm not going to get too much into what the story is because there's some plot twists and some, I think there's some like chances of some nice development down the line. But the story effectively is um, love and dishonor uh, when the Romans are on the forefront of battle in Germania. Um, you don't need to know much else other than that, but not to say it's a bad story, but what it mostly feels, mostly feels like is that this story exists for the creators to do a really good character-driven um, and really artistically bold story. Um, I don't think it really matters too much about the background for it, except in matters where it gives character motivation. Uh, so it's really character motivation is, yes, love and yes, betrayal. Because uh, it turns out uh, the big Roman uh, general that we're going to be dealing with for the most part is uh, Germanian uh, in some degree. Uh, not that unusual. Uh, the Roman Empire took a whole bunch of places uh, over many, many years, and a lot of people who would have been from a different country um, or a different nationality would be raised as Roman, and if they did well, and if they've got uh, wealthy patrons or whatever, they could be lifted up to uh, positions of power. Not that big difference in usual kind of thing. But at this point, he realises he doesn't really want to be a Roman anymore, um, and as such, he's going to try and screw over the Roman Empire. Uh, but he has a lover who is a slave who wants to buy her freedom and marry her. Uh, and that pretty much sums up most of the plot that you need to know to start with. There's some extra details of why battles take place, but none of that feel, really feels important because this is a character-driven story. And here we get to my praise, because yes, there is a lot of praise for this comic book. Uh, first off, yes, it does do some really cool historical stuff. The costume design is fantastic, really like the accuracy levels. Um, and also, the best thing it does is it shows you, doesn't tell you a whole bunch of things. Uh, for instance, a conversation very early on, done in flashback, uh, is uh, the Roman general and his uh, slave, I think Sumerian, I think, uh, slave lover, lover um, and they have this fantastic conversation about what each of them, what the other person means to the, uh, the other person, and it's great, but it's kind of stayed when you first read it. It, it feels like these bo two people are both quite withdrawn about their declarations of love, uh, and it doesn't take long though to realise that the reasons for this are kind of in, built into the world. And the more you think about it, the more they're showing you of the world by the way the dialogue is written. Yes, she is not uh, declaring undying love for this person. She is a slave. She is owned by somebody else. Um, and her life is very much at risk for doing what she's doing. Um, not just that, but in a relationship these two people are going to have regardless, the massive power dynamic is very much in his favour. Um, and as such, she needs to keep him on side if she ever wants to gain her freedom. And that doesn't necessarily mean just doing everything they want. That can be seen as just placating and and not actually being authentic in uh, their emotions. He, on the other hand, clearly loves this woman, but his love language is very different than ours. Um, yes, the talk of just uh, buying her, uh, well, uh, at least buying her freedom so he can marry her seems uh, good enough, but he also shows his love by keeping a little bit distant and um, giving her a sword, uh, <laughs> which is a very odd thing. It's like he's very protective, overprotective, maybe, uh, but that is how he has been sh uh, shown to show love, or affection at least, um, as a high ranking uh, member of uh, the Roman military machine, and possibly a noble at that. Um, all of this just builds up really nicely to uh, a world that is kind of captivating. And now I'm going to talk about the artwork, and unfortunately I do lack the vocabulary to get across entirely how good this artwork is. So I'm going to do what I usually do not do, and I'm just going to show you some of the artwork from the comic book. Um, simply because I don't think you're really going to get a sense of it on a small screen that you're watching on right now, either on a mobile phone or a tablet or anything like that. But this is genuinely beautiful artwork. Uh, throughout it, it uses really, really nice deep shadowed uh, textures. Um, it has uh, interplay of light and darkness done to perfection. There is beautiful weather effects throughout it. When we do get into a fight, and there's a couple of fights in this comic book, they are fantastic. They are short, vicious, and brutish, and they work brilliantly. Uh, and the style is 
kind of sharp when it needs to be. Um, it plays in with like very bold, definite shapes. It uses a uh, very bold outlining, but also has such a richness of colour and a depth to the lighting that it feels organic at the same time. Honestly, there's not much comic book uh, art out there that I like more than this right now. It is absolutely beautiful. Because it's only a four-issue miniseries, I am kind of tempted to pick up the rest of it just based on how good it looks and how good the writer is. But I'm hoping the story is going to allow itself to be more about these characters rather than the big overarching issues. Because I think those are just setting. They are just there to give you a sense of place for what's going on. It's done effectively, but I don't think it's as necessary and I just want to read about these people. Uh, if I don't add it to my pull list, I'm certainly going to wait for this collection and read it. Because I think sitting down and reading it all in one go is going to be very, very fun indeed. Uh, right, that's it from me today. Um, because we don't have much out new this week uh, and the few new things we've got have been already snapped up by our regular orders and pull lists, uh, there might not be as many reviews this week as I want to do, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, just make sure you've properly performed the blood rituals um, so you don't miss anything. Uh, make sure you put the flags in the right places so everyone can see what's going on. Other than that, I'll see you when I see you. Look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye!